Now you've successfully transferred your drawing to your paper, the next step is to use the masking fluid to prevent any background wash from coming in and disturbing the beautiful shape of your wing. So what I'm going to recommend you do is take an old brush, a fine one, and you ought to really have a brush that you always use purely for masking fluid because masking fluid um, damages brushes really easily. A little tip for you is if you take a little bit of washing up liquid, dip your bristles into that before you start using the masking fluid. It'll just help protect those bristles a little bit. So I have some masking fluid here. It's a Winsor & Newton one. And I just want to agitate it a little bit. Mine has a yellow dye in it so that when you apply it to the paper, you can see where you've been, uh, which makes it a little bit easier. Sometimes you can get uh, blue masking fluid. Um, so yeah, other times you can get white, but I think the white makes it quite tricky to see where you've applied it. So you just want to dip the bristles of the brush into the fluid. Don't You don't need to come up the ferrule at all. And I'm just going to come across the edges along that line to up to the line, if you like, on the inside of the wing. And you place it down. And what you don't want to do, you don't want to scrub at the surface. Once you've placed it down, leave it be and move on to the next next section and what happens is as the masking fluid dries it turns to um, a rubber consistency and it prevents any of the paint from coming onto that surface so effectively it's masking that for you um, so I've just carefully come across the edges of the wing there. Um, that line there shouldn't be too difficult to paint up to because it's reasonably straight. However, the line down here is a little bit wobbly and to quickly do a background wash, um, you know, you're going to spend quite a lot of time trying to get that edge correct. So just make your life a little bit easier and come down with the masking fluid and then you know you're not going to have any issues there. Just down to the bottom here. Again, that line's fairly straight. This long curve here should be quite easy to paint up to without too much trouble, but I will protect his beak. Um, that's quite important. So let's just go around the edge of his beak there. Also, the back wing here has got this couple of little bits that stick out, so I'm going to do the same there just to make sure that I don't disturb that lovely line that we've made. Um, yeah, and that should be fine. So what you want to do straight away is wash a brush in water thoroughly and then wipe it and hopefully that little bit of soap that we used on the bristles has helped to protect the brush and it has it's come away nice and clean so that's that's worked really nicely that's great so that's it for the masking fluid remember to reapply the lid securely so that the fluid doesn't go off in the bottle and we just need to allow that to dry um, until we can touch the surface it will be a little bit sticky but as long as it's not coming away on your finger, then we know it's dry. So those areas have already dried. I just need to give it a couple of minutes for those last few areas. And then we can move on to looking at the background wash. Next, I'm going to take my number 12 round brush and I'm going to start mixing some colours for the background wash. So I have clean water now again in my larger jar just to get rid of any residue uh, that came off my brush when I used the masking fluid. 
um, just to make sure it doesn't actually damage my bristles on my watercolour brushes. So wet your brush and we're going to mix a purple to begin with and I'm going to take the French Ultramarine Blue because I want a nice deep purple. I'm going to add some water to that, so using my pipette and my clean water, just adding a few drops into that. And then cleaning off that brush and using the Alizarin Crimson because that makes a nice purple. The two colours together make a beautiful purple colour. So mix some of that red into the blue and we get this lovely rich colour. Okay, so if I just show you on a tester strip what I have, don't worry, you don't have to have exactly the same colour. It can be different, it's not a problem at all. You might even want to choose different colours altogether. You might want to choose greens and oranges or something like that. Um, but I'm going to go with blues and purples um, and pinks. So I've got a nice purple going on there. And um, I'm just going to clean my brush again. And I want to make another well of colour. So down here on my palette, I'm going to mix some just of the blue. So this is my French ultramarine blue. And get a nice mix of blue there. So quite a lot of pigment so that it's a, a rich, vivid colour. You don't want it to be too pale. That looks about right. So keep adding pigment if it's a little bit pale when you test it. Let's test it now. So that looks quite pale to me. Okay, we can see a lot of the white paper coming through. So I'm just simply going to go back into the paint and mix some more. So if you do it gradually, you'll eventually get to the kind of strength that you require. Okay. So let's try that now. So that's a little bit darker. Yep, I think that will work quite nicely. Cleaning off my brush again. And in the top well of my palette here, I'm just going to have some crimson on its own. So nice clean brush between each um, new mix. And into the crimson. Again, I want it to be quite, quite vivid. That's nice. So because our purple is made up of these two primary colours, we know that when they kind of mix together on the surface, it's all going to work really well together. We shouldn't get any muddy colours going on. So just bear that in mind if you're using alternative colours. So for example, if you were going to do oranges and blues, of course, oranges are made up with yellow and red. And then if you apply a blue next to it, you've got the three primaries together, so it's likely to make a brown color. So just bear that in mind when you're choosing your colors. And if I just show you here that crimson, so that makes a nice pink color. So I've not used too much pigment in that, so I didn't want it to be too red. It's quite a nice pale kind of pink colour. Um, so let's just mix up the purple again in the palette. So what can happen with the ultramarine blue, it's um, the pigment in that is quite heavy and you might find that the colour splits in your palette. And that's absolutely fine. It's called granulation. And it, because the pigment itself is a granulating pigment, it can do that, but I really like that effect. So I often use ultramarine blue because of that. So what we're going to do now is prepare ourselves for applying this background wash. Um, so it's a variegated wash. 
So it's a background wash, it's applied all in one go, but with different colours. Okay, so, um, pop my paintbrush down for a moment. I can move my pasta strip out of the way, now I'm happy with the colours I have. And I'm going to wet the surface first. I want these colours to move about a little bit on the paper. So by wetting the surface first, I get a little bit of control with that. And also, if I wet the surface up to the line of this wing here, I know that when I place my paint down, the paint will run into that water, but it won't run across the line there because the paper on the other side will be dry. So it gives us a little bit of control and you must remember to dip your brush into the clean water when you're doing this and we're going to start by doing the lower section so what I'll do is I'll do it in a few different sections and we'll move quite quickly so just make sure you've got your paint prepared and you have enough of it in your wells then you shouldn't have any problems okay so We'll work quite quickly. Remember where's masking fluid there so we don't have to be too careful around that section but we do want to be careful around the bottom there of the bird. So I'm just going to put a little bit of water down around that wing and remember I'm not really coming to the edge of the paper with the paint but I will come to the edge of the paper with the water because I want some nice soft edges. So now I've got that down, I already have some purple on my brush, so I'm going to start with the purple. And I'm just going to bring it up to the line and just kind of just be a little bit loose with this. Don't be too um, controlled if you like. We want this to be nice and hazy. Okay, so that's a little bit of purple washing off my brush into the pink I think. Let's get some of this lovely pink up to the edge of the wing here at the bottom. That's great, just allow it to merge with the purple, that's fine. And just bring that pink down. And then I'm going to switch quite quickly to the blue. Into the blue there and place some of that blue down. Now the paper's starting to dry, but that's okay, don't, don't worry too much. We want a nice texture, remember, so I'm coming in with my table salt and I'm going to sprinkle some of that salt down into that wet paint. And that should give us some nice texture. So don't do too much salt, just a few grains and that'll be enough just to disturb the paint and give us a beautiful texture. So remember, this is drying now, so we need to move fairly quickly. I have water on my brush. I'm just going to wet this side. Just up to the edge. Oops. There's a grain of salt that caught my brush there. So I'm just wetting if it's a little bit dry, if you're getting some harder lines, just take dab that water around those hard edges here and it will soften them right up. Okay. Also, if the water, the um, paint starts to pool a little bit, if it's buckling, just dab your brush into that and it will lift up some of that paint. Okay, so I've wet this up to the line, it's nice and damp and I'm going to come back in with some, I think this time we'll start with the blue, still have blue on my brush from before, so let's start with the blue here. The pink's slightly wet still so that's great, it will bloom and bleed into that nicely, move on the surface. So I want some little strands of paint coming across. That's lovely. Um, just so remember to work a little bit quicker. So I'm coming down up the side now of the neck. 
of this one. Um, if you're unsure as to where you've put the paint, the, the water, beg your pardon, just look from an angle and you will see the shine on the surface of the paper. So this time, just rinse off my brush and I'm going to come in now with some of the purple and bring this up to the neck. So if you've applied the water nice and carefully around the neck, the, the paint shouldn't come into that line, so you should be okay um, with that. And then just rinse a little bit off and go into pink now, I think. Add a bit of pink up here. There we go. Going back to the water, I'm going to wet this edge and the head. Looking from an angle to see where I've applied that water. There might be one or two grains of salt that have jumped across the paper, so. Um, don't worry about that too much if you come across a few grains. It will give you a little bit of texture where you're not expecting it, but that's not a problem. So I'm going to go more pink this time. Just dabbing the tip of my brush to the surface and the paint will run off it into the water that's there. Drag that pink all the way down the back of his neck. up to the line okay and then I think we'll go back to some blue here get some strong blue and remember here we don't have any masking fluid so we need to just be careful around that edge of the wing And my paper's drying quite quickly because it's warm. I've got the heating on in the house and um, it's warm, so you may well have the same where you are. Just, just be aware of how wet or dry your paper is. You can always apply more water if it starts to dry. And I'm just going to, just going to tip my board a little, allow some of that paint to run up to this corner and up here on the left as well. So allowing the paint to do what it wants to do. Okay, that's great. That's lovely. Um, let's have a look. Yes, so I want to just add a bit more salt. I'm going to put it in this section on the right behind his wings. It's going to help to show movement. Um, and that's the reason for adding this salt. Give it some movement and some texture, some interest into the painting. And I think that's working really nicely down here in the foreground. And it will do the same at the back there. So let's just take a look. I think it's working well. Just tilt your paper if you want to, just encourage paint to move. If you're getting a few puddles that can sort of disperse the paint a little bit. Um, but what I'm going to do now, I've noticed that there's some areas where the water has come into my line but that's okay, I'm going to let it dry and in a moment with a damp clean brush I can lift that. Um, I've just noticed that the pink line hasn't quite the edge here hasn't quite come up to the line so that while it's still damp I'm using a damp brush, the paint's still a little bit wet, just encouraging it to come up to that line. There. Sometimes you know when you're working quickly these things happen because you're, you're obviously wanting to apply the paint nice and fast and cover an area reasonably quickly and you do miss spots, that's that's what happens. But if you keep a close eye as it's drying and as, as you're working, you can 
you can catch these things and, uh, and rectify them quite quickly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back in about half an hour and do some touching up around the edges where necessary. Well it's been about half an hour to 40 minutes and my paper is now pretty much dry and the first thing to do is to just rub away the salt from your painting just gently with the pad of your finger you'll feel the grains of salt on the surface and just give them a quick rub to remove those there we go and as you can see the salts worked really nicely so we've got these beautiful little kind of crystallized shapes appearing within the wash that we applied um, we've also got what we call watercolor blooms occurring here and there and this happens when the paper is drying at different times um, you end up with these little soft edges um, which look really effective on this particular painting it works very well indeed um, especially against the salt technique as well now coming back and looking again I can see that some of my edges need tidying up so what I'll do is take my number six brush this is a smaller brush that you have clean water and just take some of that water off because you only want your bristles to be to be damp so just taking off some of that water and just coming up to the edge here you can see that it's bled into the, the neck there of my swan in fact if I just bring my painting a bit closer to the camera you can see here that it's run in and then down this edge could be tidied and also that edge there of the neck I'm just going to go around and tidy those up so with my damp brush and also a bit of clean paper towel what we'll do is rub across the surface and then blot up with the paper towel and press down quite firm and blot that out so clean water each time be careful not to scrub too much so be gentle and just do if it, if necessary do it three or four times until it lightens that patch of paint it's already a little bit better it might be that um, your pigments are a little bit staining so you may not be able to lift it fully but you should be able to improve it there's a little bit just down here so I'm going to do the same thing here just to rub away that blue paint that's much better straight away I'm finding that the crimson is a little bit staining so that purple up here isn't going to fully be removed but it has improved um, just tidying up this edge with some water just actually rather than removing this I'm just softening that line a little bit there we go and then dabbing off anything that's come into the neck so I'm just wetting paint a little bit and rubbing sort of putting it into the correct position if you like just moving it slightly so that it fills those have any gaps that have been left um, and just improving it that way there we go so that's a little bit better um, the top of his head, in actual fact, let's give myself some more room. Always make things easy for yourself. If necessary, and you need to turn your board, then go ahead and do that. Um, let's just rub away some of this pink, if possible. Sometimes what you're left with against the hard edge, um, so it hit the dry paper 
and it stopped moving and what happens sometimes is you get a darker edge there and just simply softening it by rubbing at the surface with just a damp brush just softens that up a little bit and stops it being quite harsh I'm going to do the same just down the body here turn the board again just soften that line stops it from being quite so prominent quite so obvious what happens is it draws your eye and um, you don't want that to happen really we have this blue section down here that I've just spotted so you may well need to spend just a, a few minutes just going around your swan and doing little touch-ups like this um, just to tidy him up a little bit softened up some of that blue down there and then I want to just remove part of it and there we go so that's much better there's a spot of blue on his body there just remove that and that's much better and then once you're happy um, there's a couple more bits that I'd like to just soften off but once you are happy, the next step is going to be removing the masking fluid uh, because you don't need that anymore. It's done its job. It's stopped the paint from coming into the wing there and it protected the beak very nicely at the top too. So the way to approach this is to be gentle and take your time. You use the pad of your finger and just gently rub across the surface where that masking fluid is and it will kind of come together in little beads of rubber that you can just pull away so just pushing away from me on this section here and you can see it's all kind of coming together and then I can remove it and same on this edge what you don't want to do is if you've got anything any wet paint anywhere near this masking fluid just allow that to dry first before you remove it um, otherwise you'll smudge that paint there we go so that's my masking fluid removed great and then it's on to the next step we'll look at applying some washes across our swan